good evening all today i am going to discuss about a big very big topic which is called as shabarimala issue which is shabarimala issue the temple premises which is located in kerala so there were lot of issues that women should not uh, enter into the shabarimala temple where the lord ayappa by different different names will be uh, called upon so into this particular temple the women the girls from 10 years and the women till 50 years are not allowed the menstruating woman the mean that from 10 to 50 is a menstrual time period the reproductive time period menarche is the beginning of the menstrual cycle and menopause is the end of the menstrual cycle in this particular time period of menarche to menopause in this particular menstrual cycle period reproductive age the woman should not enter into this particular sacred premises of shabarimala so that issue i am going to discuss why because a uh, couple of days back couple of days back the the chief justice of india mentioned that the shabarimala issue is not a small issue it it cannot be dealt by any five judge bench it should be a longer bench of seven judges bench so he constituted for a seven judge bench for that particular seven judge bench for that particular seven judge bench we are having so the seven judge bench issue has the seven judge bench has been given to the shabarimala issue so what is this shabarimala case the chronological order of shabarimala case and what are the constitutional provisions present in this particular shabarimala case we will be discussing in this particular class so the shabarimala case the chief justice of india bob day on thursday orally remarked that in september 2018 judgment so what is this particular judgment i will be discussing now september 2018 judgment of the supreme court allowing menstruating women to worship at the shabarimala temple at the moment at the moment not be the last word last word as the issue has been referred to a larger bench of seven benches so september 2018 the judgment which is given by the supreme court five judge bench it will not be the last word it will not be the last word so the review will take place the review will takes place by the seven judge bench and this particular seven judge bench will be deciding the factor will be deciding whether the woman can enter into the shabarimala sacred premises or not so the chronology we will be seeing what are the cases why the woman is not allowed into the shabarimala temple we all things we will be seeing in the upcoming session so the background is as for the traditions and customs of women between 10 and 50 years of age menstruating women were not allowed to enter into shabarimala temple because there are some rational texts according to the shabarimala according to the beliefs of those people the restrictions find its source in the legend that the temple deity that the temple deity swami ayappa is brahmachari and woman entry will affect the celibacy of the deity so he was he is a lifelong bachelor or a lifelong he who is the person who is maintaining his lifelong brahmacharyam so if any woman enter into his premises his brahmacharya his celibacy will be disturbed that is the belief and the ban on menstruating women was enforced under rule 3 clause b of the kerala hindu places of public worship authorization of entry rules 1965 so this is the law a executive resolution is there and that particular executive resolution also mentions that that executive resolution also mentions that yes the woman should not be allowed into the temple premises based upon this particular legend based upon this particular belief and based upon this particular rule mentioned by the executive resolution of the government the woman is not allowed into the temple premises of shabarimala so i want to give you a brief timeline how this particular timeline is there so in 1990 in 1990 a petition was filed in the kerala high court seeking a ban on the entry of women inside the shabarimala temple why because why because in 1989 and 1990 some of the empowered women the women the advocates of equal rights for women they want to enter into the temple premises on this particular background a petition was filed in the kerala high court why women should not enter into the temple premises in 1990 so the story begins from 1990 onwards so a turning point a demand for entry of women into the temple premises the 1990 
One, the Kerala High Court imposed restriction on women aged 10 to 50. So the same thing which was when present, the ad hoc, which was status quo, the status quo was been reimposed by the Kerala High Court. Then again in 2006, then again in 2006, a petition was filed in the Supreme Court by the Indian Young Lawyers Association. The association is Indian Young Lawyers Association seeking entry of women aged between 10 and 50. The matter was referred to three judge bench two years later in 2006. So a petition was filed in the Supreme Court in 2006 and the petition was been pending from 2006 onwards in 2008. It was been referred to three judge bench. From that particular moment onwards, the case was pending and in 2016, January, the court questioned the ban saying it wouldn't be done under the constitution. And the first time in 2016, the Supreme Court mentioned that this wouldn't be happened in the constitution of India, under the constitution of India. Hence, why women should be banned from entry into the Sabarimala temple? And in April 2006, the United Democratic Front Government, UDF Front Government of Kerala, led by Chief Minister Oman Chandi in Kerala, informed the top court that it was duty bound to protect the right to practice the religion of Sabarimala devotees. So the Kerala government also, the Kerala government also promoted, yes, there should not be any violation of temple rules and regulation hence they want to protect the rights of the temple premises so in this way the case was going on going on going on and in november 2016 the government kerala government told the supreme court that was in favor of women allowing women inside the scantum of the temple so again they changed the mind because of the demand of the woman so they are now ready to allow the woman into the temple premises why because it's a political issue so they want to they want to get the oath from the woman and it is a communist state where the people where the people where, where the people communist government where the people are very much pro for equal rights then in 2017 the supreme court referred the case to a constitution bench constitution bench means a five judge bench into this particular constitution bench of five judge bench the case was been referred then what happened in September 2018? Then in September 2018, a five-judge bench of the Supreme Court struck down the entry ban and paved the way for the entry of women of all ages into the Ayappa temple of Sebarimala. So this is the revolution. In September 2018, the Supreme Court mentioned that yes, all the women between 10 and 50 years, they can enter into the temple premises. There would not be any ban, there would not be any condition, there would not be any regulation for the entry of women into the temple premises. September 2018. And for that, the, and for that, the Kerala government sought time to implement the verdict. Why? Because the people agitated. The, the traditional people agitated against the judgment. So that so the government of Kerala asked that we want some time in order to implement the order given by the court. And by the time what happened in February 2019, the court reserved its judgment on a plea seeking a review of the September 2018 verdict. In February 2019, on the judgment of five, five judge bench, there were reviews, there were been uh, pleas were been filed in the Supreme Court for the review of the judgment of September 2018. Then, then on fine day, that means November 2019, the Supreme Court referred. The Supreme Court referred the case to seven judge bench but did not stay its earlier verdict allowing the entry of women of all ages into the Ayappa temple at Sabarimala. So it did not give any stay but they told that now we are give, giving this particular case to the seven judge bench and the seven judge bench will be deciding the fate of Sabarimala temple whether women should enter into the temple or not. So now it is at the junction of seven judge bench of supreme court and the seven judge bench of supreme court will be deciding so as of now there is no outcome as of now there is no judgment with respect to entry of women into the sabarimala temple the seven judge bench will be deciding the fate of entry of women into the sabarimala temple premises so why matter is referred so there are some questions why the matter is referred to seven judge bench the debate about the constitutional validity of practices entailing into restriction of entry of women generally in the place of worship is not limited to this case but also arises in respect of so here i want to tell that this is not the just case of shabarimala it is the case of future 
petitions like the right of Muslim women to enter Dargah mosque. Why women should not enter? Why? Because if the judgment comes that yes, the woman can enter into the Sabarimala, immediately there will be a petition, then why women should not enter into the mosque? So, right of Parsi woman who is married to a non-Parsi into the holy fireplace of an Agair. So, any Parsi woman who marries a non-Parsi, she will not be allowed to enter into the sacred scantum. And this also arises. Issue of female genital mutilation practiced by Dawudi Bahara community. Female genital mutilation, a social problem, but which is a cultural practice present in Dawudi Bahara community will also arise now so these are all things will be coming up which will be questioning the traditions which will be questioning the customs so a new thing will be arising so it's not about only with Shabariwala issue it is about some other things some other issues of Bahara community of Muslim community of Parsi community hence the judgment plays a major role court has to also answer to the questions like up to what extent can a court intervene into an essential religious practices so what is the ambit of essential what is the ambit of court to enter into the essentiality of religious practices religious practices are there the customs the traditions the values the beliefs whatever is there they are present from the generations together so what is the ambit of court to enter into the essentiality of the religion whether court have the power to enter into the religious matters whether practices considered essential should be given constitutional protection. Some, some practices, some rituals which are believed to be essential, which are believed to be essential, whether those particular essentiality should be questioned with respect to constitutionality or not. Whether courts can invoke the notions of rationality in the matters of religion, whether courts have the right to invoke the issues of rationality in matters of religion why because religion is irrational everyone know that it's a belief belief the word itself a, a, a irrational belief a irrational word so how court can ask the question of rationality in religious matters so this many issues are there these are like ethical dilemmas now how the supreme court is going to carry forward the judgment so in this particular context in this particular context, there is a doctrine of essentiality, prelims point of view. Prelims point of view, they will ask, what is the doctrine of essentiality? The doctrine of essential, essentiality deals about what? The doctrine of essentiality comes in which context? The doctrine of essentiality deals about what? So, the doctrine of essentiality was invented by a seven judge bench of Supreme Court in the Shirur Mutt case in 1954. First statement, prelims point of view. In which, in which judgment this doctrine of essentiality came in Shirur Mutt case in 1954 first statement in prelims he will be giving the statements which of the following statements are correct which of the following statements are incorrect the court held that the term religion will cover all rituals and practices integral to a religion and what constitutes an essential part of the religion will be ascertained with will be ascertained with reference to the tenets and doctrines of that religion itself court took upon itself the responsibility of determining the essential and non-essential practices of a religion so what is essential this judgment told that there are some practices there are some rituals which are essential for every religion so those essentiality cannot be questioned with the rationality they will be followed with the customs they will be followed with the traditions they will be followed with the belief so these are the essentialities which are present with the re, with the religions which which cannot be questioned do you got my point so doctrine of essentiality mainly deals with religion mainly deals with beliefs mainly deals with customs mainly deals with traditions which are essential for any religion for for spread or for practicing so this is the doctrine of essentiality in this particular judgment of Shabarimala also doctrine of essentiality they need to follow it they need to practice it they need to take into consider so by taking this particular doctrine of essentiality there are some constitutional provisions with respect to Shabarimala issue the rights of the woman how we can deny the rights of the woman so the rights of the woman is also very very important as per the constitution as per the human beings because of the second grade value which we are giving to the woman the atrocities against the woman is increasing the constitution provided equal treatment for the woman whether we are providing the same these are all the issues which are arise but for the time being we are talking with the issue of shabarimala in shabarimala issue in shabarimala issue this particular constitutional provisions are taken into consideration 
what are this constitutional provisions first constitutional provision is article 15 you know the article 15 fundamental rights of the constitution part 3 of the constitution article 15 mentions that no person shall be discriminated on the basis of race caste and sex based upon sex place of birth article 15 clause b every person shall have equal access to public places like public parks museums wells bathing bath uh, and bathing guards and temples so equal access towards temples equal act equal no discrimination equality article 15 and article 25 it states that every individual is equal is equally entitled to freedom of religion freedom of conscience and has a right to profess practice and propagate religion of one's choice so it states that every individual is equally entitled to freedom of conscience and has a right to profess practice and propagate religion of one's choice freedom to manage religious affairs subject to public order morality and health every religious denomination or any section thereof shall have the right to establish and maintain institutions for religious and charitable purpose to manage its own affairs of matters of religion to own and acquire movable and immovable property to administer such property in accordance with law article 15 clause e Article 15 states that it is a duty of everyone to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the peoples of India transcending religious, linguistic and regional or sectional diversity to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women. So religious. In India, legitimate principle intervention of the state in religion is constitutional. So these are all the fundamental rights or the constitutional provisions which are supporting entry of women. Supporting entry of women into temple premises. So the constitution is also pro towards the entry of women into Shabarimala temple. So based upon this particular factual information, what the judgment is going to come out by the seventh judge bench of the Supreme Court. The fate of the woman to enter into the Shabarimala temple will be decided by this particular factual information. So my dear friends, so everyone Subscribe to my channel Vishnuvardhan P, Vishnuvardhan or bracket Vishnuvardhan SRP. If you uh, enter into the search box of YouTube, you will be finding my uh, YouTube channel. So, so by subscribing my channel, you will be getting more current affair related topics.